how's it going? Welcome back to F1 Manager 2024 and the first part of Season 2 of our Lotus Road to Glory career mode. Today we are going to be uh, going through the winter uh, between obviously the end of season one and the start of season two we're going to be welcoming a brand new driver we're going to be updating uh, our facilities we're going to be getting some new sponsorships we're going to be uh, implementing a new livery it's it's going to be amazing and uh, i'm really looking forward to it i've been looking forward to it for a while uh, if you're looking forward to it as well or if you're enjoying the series so far if this is your first episode make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below it would be absolutely amazing if we we could hit 100 likes for the first part of season two to get us off to a flyer but uh, yeah really really excited for this we've got lots of new faces coming in and uh, it should be an exciting time so without further ado let's get ourselves immersed into the action then and start off as we mean to go on Right, so first things first, uh, let's have a little look at our emails, make sure there's nothing else in there that we want to be doing. I don't think so. Uh, we have got Jack Dewin coming in as our affiliate next year as well. Um, in terms of development, obviously car development is now locked. Um, there's nothing else we can do. We have put in a couple more research projects. Um, all of that is absolutely fine. Uh, we don't need to, to worry about that. Um, in terms of our uh, current warehouse, we don't need to worry. So I think we're all good. Um, we've got all of the, the positions filled um, that we want. We've got, of course, James Allison continuing next season. Uh, we've got Dirk De Beer coming in for Elizabeth Avery. Um, Willie Mayer will be continuing as our sporting director. Uh, Gary Gannon will be continuing on next year. He is going to be uh, with Mick Schumacher next year. Um, and uh, Guy Diego will be joining up with Daniel Ricciardo, who, of course, will be our uh, main man next season, replacing Nico Hulkenberg. So I believe we can just uh, continue on a little bit. Uh, the tour centre has been updated. I think we can probably upgrade that again. Yeah, definitely. We can get that upgraded. Uh, what about the helipad? That's going to cost us 800, but I think that's fine. I think we have got that money. Should have probably checked it first. It looks like we're absolutely fine here. Yeah, okay. Go to the inbox. So, tour centre upgrade complete. James Vowles uh, wanted to offer my congratulations. We put up a good fight, but your team fought just a little harder uh, or just got a little more lucky. We'll do our best to stop you next season. Don't worry. Enjoy the end of the year, and I'll see you on the track soon. So, thanks, James. Thanks for that uh, lovely message. Okay, our level one race simulator is up and running. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about that. We don't need to speed that up. Let's keep pushing forward. Now, one thing we probably can do is uh, focus even more on our uh, pit stop stuff. So let's go into Willy, Willy Meyer here. If we go into... Uh, uh, what do we want to do here? Yeah, we can probably just add in all gym stuff. Um, so let's let's see. Um, yeah, let's do some car building stuff. help out a little bit but yeah there's no no reason to not exhaust them to be honest with you Do 
gym training. Yeah. Well, is, is that the what helps us the most? No idea. Let's go with that. That's fine. I know some people were saying that they've managed to get that down to 1.9 seconds. Uh, perhaps we need to increase our facilities to be able to do that. Um, right, so December staff survey, that's all okay. Uh, contract talks have ended. That's fine. He wanted a, a hell of a lot of money to be our affiliate driver next season, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, new facility. Upgrade. Perfect. Let's keep pushing on. The only thing is, I wonder if we can... Can we do the... Can we do the two percent even more than what we are doing? No, we can't. That's fine. Right, okay, it is going to be at the end of the season then. Obviously, not a lot happens in December. You you can't uh, you can't do a great deal. Certainly, when you've not got a lot of money. Two percent that upgraded. Underfloor research is done. Let's go and have a look at all of that. Yep, yeah, that looks fine. Nice. Okay. Uh, one thing we could have a look at, though, is... Um, refurbing some of the stuff. So the boardroom could do with a refurb. Um, maybe... Oh. That's the thing. It does cost a, a fair amount of money. So I think we need to wait on all of that. Let's push forward to the end of the season. And we should meet the cost cap, which is great. Willie Meyer moves up to 74. And here we come then. Bullseye, what's that? Achieve the board season target. Perfect, okay. Um, we will be getting some money, I think. From the sponsor plan. And we have now moved up to 563 on our team marketability. Um, the engagement's gone up, race targets, uh, we did pretty well at um, our core, are satisfied. <laughs> DHL, fastest pit stops. Uh, we ended up with 36 points in the end. That was just six, uh, 600,000 uh, pounds. Uh, not great there. Um, yeah, they've still got high confidence with us. That's fine. Front wing research complete. Uh, Drivers' Championship then. Nico Hulkenberg ended with eight points. Uh, Mick Schumacher ended up with one point. The whole team ended up with nine points, which was great. Um, we're now going to be moving up to a two-star team. Um, our poor performance was, or our target was ninth. We got seventh. Uh, our long-term objective is to score points in 50% of a season's races. We got to seven of 12 this year. We've still got four seasons remaining with that target. Uh, performance constructors championship with seventh best driver position was 12th. Team principal rating goes from zero to 200. Uh, our constructors rating has gone up to 227 and our team rating up to 297. Uh, end of season board review, they're happy with that and they're going to give us £1.5 million. Pounds. So there you go then. Uh, regulation changes for 2025. The cost cap is obviously going to be reduced next season. Um, we are having minor technical changes, particularly looking at the low speed sections of the car uh, rather than the high speed sections. And it's going to affect those four parts in particular. Let's head into a brand new season then. Uh, what I am going to do, I'm just going to create a little backup point here. Um, 
just to ho hopefully make sure that everything is is okay. So let's get into it. Ooh, there we go. Right. Okay, new season target. So they want uh, us to finish seventh in the constructors this season, and uh, the long term objective remains the same. Uh, we can actually still switch teams, which is interesting. Let's see what that button does. Uh, so we could. That's really interesting. That is so interesting. But yeah, I'm not I'm not switching teams, so um But I don't want, I, I, I don't want to switch teams. Oh, let's let's just do that. I don't want I don't want to switch teams, but um yeah. Cuz I feel like we're going to get a different thing here. Yeah, let's just load it back to, to that backup point, which is fine. Um, but yeah, cool that we can switch teams within this world and keep Lotus F1 in there. I think that's uh, actually really awesome, isn't it? So um, yeah, very, 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 very cool. But yeah, you can see our starting balance, a minus 19 and a half million. So... We definitely need uh, a good amount of money to come to us. Right, time to review any regulation changes. Prepare for car development and check in on your team's mentality. So, 7th or above is our target. They want us to be points contenders by the end of 2028. Our balance, um, 2024 balance is 2.2 million. Uh, prize money we got 3.5 million no sponsor funding just yet um, board payments 6.6 .6 million um, facilities okay car development so we are unfortunately um, 19 and a half million down um, in terms of chassis stuff you know, chassis looks good front wing stuff um, obviously, the 2025 changes have affected that, but we are ahead of the curve on all of our front wing stuff, which is good. Uh, rear wing in a similar position, a little bit behind on our low speed and uh, medium speed. Underfloor should be a good one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Suspension is decent as well. Okay. Uh, financial changes, of course. Uh, for seventh position, we should have got 52 million, really. Didn't seem to get that. Not really sure why. Pole position bonus point. Uh, faster slap bonus point. Yeah, none of that is, is changing. Okay. Right, let's uh, push on then. Uh, we, well, I mean, obviously we could um, stay with Renault, or we could we could change our our mind. Obviously, we we broke away from Alpine last season. We might want to to change things this year. Um, yeah, Mercedes power goes up. Um, Red Bull power trains. You know, you do lose a little bit of your durability. I think Mercedes might be um, the one that we want to go for. So we are going to go for the Mercedes engine for this season. It'll give us a little bit more power um, and a little bit more durability, which I think is, is really important for us. And um, it's a little bit down on fuel efficiency, but that's uh, not necessarily something that we need to worry about. Um Oh, but yes, we are going to be going for the Mercedes engine this season. Okay, so Hulkenberg has gone to Mercedes. You can see him there. He is there. He's uh, he's going to be happy. A happy chappy this season. And there is our new boy, Mr. Daniel 
Ricardo. So let's uh, switch our engineers around. And he is going to be with uh, Daniel Ricardo, and Gary Gannon is going to regroup with Mick Schumacher. Uh, we obviously have uh, Jack Dewin in there as well. I don't know if we can put him in uh, any... Uh, it doesn't look like we can. I was seeing if I could put him in any sort of lower formula, but that's fine. What's he need to work on? Let's have a look. Uh, corner and braking, adaptability, smoothness. Uh, yeah, I think probably pace on the long runs is uh, what he should be working on. And we've got Paul Aaron in there as well. He's uh, joining us. Put him on the uh, race strategy stuff. And then we've got our racing team. We've got uh, Daniel Ricciardo. What does he want to work on? Uh Probably a pace on the short runs, to be honest. Mick Schumacher, what can he work on? Definitely smoothness, so it's going to be uh, long runs for Mick Schumacher. Gary Gannon, he is going to continue working on responsiveness. Same with uh, Guyton Yego. Into our staff, we've got James Allison back for another season. Um... There are a couple that he could work on. Body work is certainly one of them. Dirk De Beer, he's enthusiastic. He likes us, <laughs> which is good. Um, what does he need to work on? He's pretty pretty good at everything. Um, medium speed downforce is probably what he needs to work on. So grip and traction is what we'll give him. And Willie Meyer will continue on the drill pr planning. Let's have a little look at the car performance it's looking like uh, 11th best at the minute um which is very good that's a, a positive start for us that's a, an improvement on last year and if we uh, compare it to some of the other teams let's see uh who's the the best team on the grid so ferrari are looking up there mclaren are looking strong once again Red Bull, very strong. Wow, Red Bull have been working hard. for uh, Mercedes are going to be low point scorers by the looks of that. Uh, Alpine, certainly still the slowest. Williams midfield. Haas are looking okay in some areas. RB, um, I've taken a massive drop actually because they were m massive top 10 runners last season. Um, Kick Sauber, they're going to struggle. Aston Martin are looking good. Probably the fourth best team. So I think we're, the, we're about the sixth best team. RB are the ones that have massively dropped off here. So, uh, we've got an internal car report there. Everything is uh, looking good in terms of uh, the progress from last season. You look at last season's car... And you look at this season's car and you think, wow, that is a big step forward. So I think we can be happy with that pit crew performance. Um, probably need to get that sorted. So let's start off the season. Let's try to get that pit stop time down. be nice yeah definitely need to focus on keeping on going come the end of the season uh, come the end of the month sorry get some uh, gym training in there Looks like gym training is uh, what affects the, the, the time the most. There we go, 
one. That's fine. Okay, right. Uh, so that's fine. Um, car park development open, but we don't have any money to sort that out at the minute. And there's our driver development update. Right, sponsor negotiations. So uh, we have our uh, obvious, obviously our first uh, main sponsor to think about. Um, and then we should be able to do some minor ones. Now, in terms of how much funding we've got, I mean, MMOX, that's mainly focusing on uh, race day performance. I'm not as interested in that, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Oddcord uh, want to give us 20 million up top. That's pretty decent. Um, good amounts for engagements and a good amount for race day. Um, Vela, meanwhile, will give us 16 million up front. They'll give us 24 million through engagements less on race day performance um kind of tempted to go with odd code because it's given us the biggest upfront fee um i mean the engagements are easy to do um Yeah, I'm going to go for Vela, I think. Or do we go Odd Cord? Let's click Odd Cord and see how many optional sponsors we can get in there. Um, so there's a few there. Abeos uh, want to give us some upfront funding. They want to give us some engagement. Yeah, this is looking good. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, that's a, a that's a good one, Vulture. Right, I definitely think we want the uh, Euro Wire Exchange. Seven point four million up top for that. Um. Yeah, this is uh, this is a tough decision, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, I think we want that one as well. That'll give us some more funding. And that one, we can have up to five. So I think go for all of the upfront ones. That'll help our car development massively. So that's seventy-two million now um, of our funding sorted out. Uh, this one here, you know, we can get 9.5 million from Serpent um, on race day. I think that that's an important one to have in there. And then, what is the last one? So there's a 9.6 one there for Vulture. But we could just do that through engagements. Yeah, let's go with that, Apted. So that's 84.4 million. That's a decent amount of money. And that's whether we go for... ...one of these instead. I mean, we could go Vela, couldn't we? Yeah, it's just really, really tough to... No, we're going to go odd code because we want the, the upfront money. We want 39 million coming up front. That's going to give us 18 million left to spend on car development, upgrading the facilities. I think that, that that's a no-brainer. We can make up another 25 million on race day um, and another 18.6 through engagements. That looks good to me. 
Let's go for that. Right, okay. Now it is time uh, to get on with some uh, livery stuff. Of course, we're going to be going for a brand new livery uh, here in Season 2. So I will get on with that and I'll see you guys when we're finished. Okay, folks, so here we go. This is our livery for the next season. And uh, we have gone for the gloss effect, but we are going back to the British Racing Green and uh, gold uh, colours that we have seen in the past. It might look a little bit light there. Um, as, as, it's it's the it's the gold that I'm I'm struggling with to be honest with you. you can see how dark it actually is um, there, um, and you know the darker you get, the more it, it just sort of fades to to black. I think maybe a couple more clicks down is uh, possibly what we need. Um, Something in that color there, and then move that one over to that yeah that looks a little bit better doesn't it so if i save that as a new design um it is very very difficult to to get that uh, sorted uh you then need to go back into this menu frustratingly and click the, the new one there that's fine um and then you have got the uh, driver outfits that uh, reflect that as well we will just double or, or change the um, change the driver's uh, stuff. Yeah, you see how it sort of looks more brown there, doesn't it? So I think we actually want to discard that. I I quite like the the, the driver uh, suits the way they are. Um, if I'm honest with you, and uh, I'm ha I might want to change the the car back you know to what it was previously yeah i quite like that i know it is a bit a bit lighter but it just pops a little bit more in my opinion so there is our brand new livery for season two then and uh yeah i'm excited to be doing something a little bit different we're gonna stick with the the same logo the black and uh, gold um and uh, you can see some of the new sponsors on the car as well which is really nice it's been fun to to sort of edit that and and get it looking the way that we want it so yeah let's continue on and there we are then uh, back into the uh, normal screen we've got 18.5 million pounds to spend uh, really important that we do get some of that going straight away um it's probably better to just refurbish some of these facilities. Uh, lots of people have been requesting to get the race simulator up, so I think that that is something that we can definitely look at doing. 1.9 million. Uh, in terms of the team hub, that's going to cost another 2.2 million, but a, an important uh, department to get right. Um, hospitality area, yeah, that's looking, looking okay at the moment. Um, I mean, refurbs are, are probably where we're going to be going with this. But we also need to get some car development going early on in this season. So, first things first. Uh, I think we need to upgrade the rear wing. I think we've seen that that was an area of weakness. So uh, we're gonna go for one point. What we're gonna go for? We're gonna go for one on that, uh, and we're gonna split this into six essentially. So twelve times six is seventy-two. Thirteen times six is seventy-eight. So that's pretty much perfect. Uh, so we'll go for fourteen there. Um, drag reduction is fine. We want to up the uh, the high speed nature a little bit and of course we want to make sure that these parts are as light as possible to give us that little bit of extra performance yeah that all looks good to me 
Okay, let's um, add some engineers in. So we're going to put three on this one. That's going to take 37 days to complete. Uh, next part of the car that we could do with improving is probably our top speed. Um, so I think we want to focus on the chassis, brand new chassis. So I'm going to put in some wind tunnel time on that as well. Going to make sure it's a lighter chassis. With a bit of drag reduction and a bit more DRS delta there. Yep, that looks good to me. Well, that looks positive. Right, okay. Stick three. Uh, no, we're going to stick two people on that one because that's a bit of a shorter project. Um, then, what else do we want to do? We can do an underfloor. Uh, suspend. Where, where are we struggling? Uh, I mean, front wing's always a, an important one, isn't it? So I'm going to stick uh, an extra hour on that one. Gonna take the airflow down a little bit. We're gonna up the tire preservation and up the high speed aspect. That all looks good to me. I'm gonna spend three engineers on that one. Get that sorted out, and then we've got one more. One more here to uh, work on. Uh, Let's go for an underfloor. I think underfloor is where a lot of the performance can be found with these current generation of cars. Um, and again, we'll focus on that high speed area of the car. A little bit of drag reduction there as well. That looks good. Right, that's going to be sorted in 30 days then. So we've uh, we spent a, a lot of money, £10 million on day one in January, uh, just to try and get things going, get things in the works. Um, in terms of drivers, of course, we've got um, Daniel Ricciardo uh, on a two-year deal. We've got um, Schumacher on a three-year deal. Uh, Gary Gannon probably will want to get renewed um yeah he's not he doesn't want to do that that's okay um but we probably want to start scouting people ready for next year um and we also want to look at who's gone where looks like to fernando alonso's gone to red bull right okay we need to press continue here so that we can find out what on earth has gone on so the boardrooms have uh, been refurbished that's nice uh, team roster update so here we go right uh, McLaren we have got Oscar Piastri and uh, Lando Norris that stayed the same we've got Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton at uh, Ferrari which is what we were expecting at Red Bull, we've got Max Verstappen and uh, Fernando Alonso. At Aston Martin, we've got Joe Guan Yu and George Russell. That is bonkers to me. George Russell has left Mercedes. He's gone to Aston Martin now. Uh, Bottas and Sonoda are at RB. Uh, Mercedes, we've got Hulkenberg and Albon. At Lotus, we have got Daniel Ricciardo and Mick Schumacher. At uh, Williams, we've got Theo Porsche making his debut alongside Esteban Ocon. At Haas, we've now got Liam Lawson and Lance Stroll. And at Sauber, we have got uh, Magnussen and Gasly. At Alpine, we've got Carlos Sainz and Logan Sargent. So, um, I don't think anybody is, is without a drive. Um... Other than Theo Porsche, where's he come into this? Uh, ah, Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi is gone. Um, and Ke yeah, Kevin Magnussen's gone over to Sauber. 
Well, this is a very different grid, isn't it, to what we were expecting. Wow. I mean, George Russell, uh, uh, or was it Fernando Alonso? I think it was Alonso that shook everything up. Sergio Perez, he's gone. Um, let's have a little look then at the at the driver market. If we go into scouting, um, I'm assuming Perez has just disappeared. Yeah, he's a, a free agent now. So that would have been a, an interesting option. Obviously, Perez... Um, you know, not really a top-line uh, driver anymore, but um, could have been an option for us. Wow. Right, Oli Behrman, I think we want to get him scouted. We do need to uh, appoint our scouts again, I believe. Uh, where do we do that? Staff. Is it in staff? Oh, scouting team. Why can't I do that? Why won't that let me? Okay, let's upgrade that facility and hope that that fixes it. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, we can look at the Formula 2 lineup. Anybody in there that we're not expecting? I don't think so. That's all looking good. So let's continue on a little bit. And extended deadline for that. 16th of Feb. Right, when's the first day of the uh, race of the season? First race of the season is in Bahrain, so I don't really need to spend it, but I will pay the overtime because we've got the money. Right now, we don't want to spend loads and loads, though. Uh... Yeah, I don't know why that scouting team is not working. I did hear that that was a glitch. That's not something that has happened to me yet, but clearly it has done now. So that might mean that we're, we're unable to scout drivers, scout staff, and that's going to be really annoying. Unless this facility upgrade helps us out. That's the race simulator sorted. Staff survey, so Schumacher's not very happy. There's quite a few of them not very happy. I don't really know why. Not a lot I can do. But let's uh, keep pushing on and uh, we'll see. Hey, there you go. Dirk to be has uh, moved up. Nice to see. Yeah, I'm Guessing that's still broke, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, uh, Jared Murphy is uh, a free agent now. Elizabeth Avery, I thought she was moving somewhere else. Very interesting. Right, let's uh, push on. Okay, so we've got uh, something that requires um, our response. So, good morning, Captain. I've spoken with the board, and I'm sorry to say that we are rather concerned about the team's who are performance. The success of the team on uh, race weekends is, of course, our primary way. Um, let's go for that. Yeah, I don't really know why that happened. Uh, we have got some designs coming through, which is good. So, chassis. Um, and... What else? So we've got chassis and underfloor sorted out. Right. Um, how long is it? It's still 27 days until Bahrain. So we can probably make four of those. Actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make two of those for now. We'll get that £800,000 back. Uh, chassis will also just make two of those for now. 
Um, I'm going to actually rush those through. I know that that costs us an extra half million, but that will allow us to get everything else in there as well. Okay, it's uh, looking looking good at the moment. Driver development updates. Nothing there. Pity. Let's go to our pit crew development now. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. We want to go to cumulative and we want to see by then what is going to happen. Don't need them to be well rested necessarily. Just something less than exhausted really would be the ideal. We can get another half. Uh, Half a second, uh, or half a tenth of a second, sorry, not half a second off that. Yeah, that looks fine. That looks fine. We'll go with that. Okay, right, uh, push on then. Getting up towards our next facility upgrade. I'm hoping that the, the scouts will be fixed here. Might not be the case. It's a team hub updated. That should at least make people happy. Alright, scouting department is sorted out. Is it going to let us? No. I, I honestly don't know how to fix that. If anybody's got a bit of a workaround for that, that would be fabulous. Um, because we want to get scouting people ready for next season. But that is not working right now. But hopefully that'll be sorted in the next patch. There's our next upgrades come through. We've got no manufacturing slots available right now. This is why we've done it the way we've done it, so that we should be able to get that off and running. Right, um, we would like some more designs to finish off this ATR period. Fine. Yep, that looks good. Yeah, we don't need to, to rush anything. Um, intense also doubles it, but it's probably not worth it at this stage to, to do that. What I can do actually is assign more engineers to that. Let's get that, yeah, let's get that done in 24 days because that's how long we've got left on the ATR period. Do the same for side pods. A little bit of drag reduction in there. Perfect. Yeah, nice. Okay, so that's going to be all sorted by uh, the end of the ATR window. That That's very efficient. So let's get our manufacturing complete as soon as possible. And then we can put the front wing in and the um, rear wing in for manufacturing straight away. And then we should be able to get stuff made in time. So let's head to manufacturing. Going to go for front wing first. And we will make four of them. Nice. Okay, push on.
So same for the rear wing now. Let's go for them mid. Now we can go to the warehouse and we can put on the new underfloor on both cars. We can put on the new chassis on both cars. And that should see us look a little bit stronger in the car analysis screen. You can see we're still um, 11th and 12th. We're starting to get higher up, certainly on low speed. Yeah, I, I like that. I, th I think we, we could be on for some points in uh, this, this first race. Once we've got the front wing and rear wing on the car, we'll see... We'll see where our performance truly lies. Okay, welcome to the 2025 season. Obviously, McLaren are the defending champions. Okay, right. Um, we should be able to put parts on the car. Yep. About the rear wing, yep. Perfect. Right, so we've got all of our upgrades on the car, ready for pre-season testing. And we can see where we're at here. Certainly a very light car, which is good to see. Powertrain is, is looking decent. There's the front wing bits. So, you, you know, you can have a look overall at... Which bits are good, which bits are not. You can see certainly our side pods and our suspension aren't great. Rear wing is really not good. That's our new rear wing as well. So we do probably need to focus uh, a bit more of our attention on the rear wing. Right, sponsor plan. Uh, let's autofill the activities. That's uh, apparently enough to get going. I think the the scouts got lost in the uh, in the sponsor plan, weirdly, because we did have them for that, didn't we? But and it is what it is. Right, so let's have a look then at um, sponsor package. What's this? Arcor will be our title sponsor for the twenty twenty five season. I think that's all good. Right, let's have a look at um, post Bahrain. Yeah, we're looking okay. Looking about where we expect. Um, so Guy Diego and Daniel Ricciardo are not happy. I think we need to try and intervene there and get them happier. Going into the season, you know, that is not going to work out if... Because Daniel Ricciardo, if his mentality is bad, he is just going to decline and decline and decline this season. Um, as, it, as it happens at the minute, he's still 81 rated. He's still looking good. But, uh, yeah. Right, uh, we are going to put in another manual save there. Just to sort of back everything up. Um, and let's set ourselves some race targets for this weekend. So, uh, Daniel Ricciardo, we are going to... We're going to play it safe and say 14th with him and Mick Schumacher. We are going to say 15th. But let's get ourselves into it then. The 2025 season is about to get underway. Welcome to Sakia. Doesn't it feel good to be back? The beginning of a brand new Formula One season. Every team, every driver, whether rookies or champions, all start here on zero, ahead of another year's battle for glory. Williams are taking a gamble this weekend on a new driver, but you have to ask, will it pay off? And with that, I think it's time to get started. Okay, uh, exciting times, obviously. Lots of people in different teams, and uh, yeah, I'm um, 
I'm very excited to see how we get on. So I will see you for the first qualifying session of the season. Let's hope the teams took full advantage of practice. It's time for qualifying. Bahrain's track is dusty and abrasive. And even under the floodlights, qualifying is tough on soft tires. Teams will need to use their tire allocations wisely. If we could just talk about Mick Schumacher for a second. Given his recent form, how's he going to be going into this session? Well, Crofty, here is a driver who's just oozing confidence right now. We could see the impact it's having, and I'm sure that'll carry through to qualifying. Buckle up then, folks. It's almost time for qualifying. Okay, then. Uh, we are ready for qualifying. Uh, we have done a, a great job so far in a practice. Went for a bit of a glory run at the end of FP1 with uh, low fuel and soft tyres. Managed to finish fourth and sixth in that session. Uh, finished 10th and 12th in FP2 and then in practice 3, a little bit slower, um, 12th and 13th. But we're looking in the mix, certainly seem to be up there with uh, Mercedes again, uh, RB, Haas um, at the front. It's looking like Red Bull, McLaren and Aston Martin, Ferrari just a little bit off that, but uh, <laughs> we don't know until we get into qualifying. Here is the setups that we have got for the boys. Uh, they're both looking pretty happy with their qualifying setups. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this Grand Prix. Let's uh, get ourselves into the action then. Uh, here in Bahrain. You get that first look at our brand new car and uh, Daniel Ricciardo as well and here he comes and I think that car looks rather beautiful if I do say so myself I really like uh, all of the different angles of the car and you can see him just hurtling towards turn one there focus on your lap looks okay. lovely the, the glossy car under the floodlights nice and shiny yeah, Mick Schumacher out there as well. We have obviously moved up the pit lane. Uh, one of the new features this year is that the garages switch places uh, depending on where you finish in the constructors. So that's a really cool one. Uh, we've also changed our team colours round so uh, that the sort of gold is uh, now what we see on track, which I, th I think is quite nice as well. But let's uh, ride on board with daniel ricardo and see what sort of time he can put in so it's a 27-0 first sector we'll see how that compares to mick schumacher in a second a little bit of a tour from the williams car there 27-2 for mick schumacher so once again daniel ricardo outperforming mick schumacher in qualifying trim over one lap and here he comes then up to the line Daniel Ricciardo for his first lap in uh, Lotus F1 is a 130.6 there go in, go in. so a 40.8 middle sector there for Mick Schumacher about five tenths off his teammate right now and here he comes around the final corner then Mick Schumacher comes up to the line so it's a 22-9 for, uh, for Ricardo, 23-0 for Mick, and that ends up being just over half a second off his teammate. Okay, but uh, positive is we are well ahead of uh, the, the Williams and the Kicksaubers, Liam Lawson. Uh, Bottas in the RB has gone above. Um... Mick Schumacher, but Ricardo is faster than Hulkenberg at the moment. So, yeah, I'm really intrigued to see where this pace takes us. Uh, I do feel sorry for Carlos Sainz, obviously winning races last year for Ferrari. He's now in the slowest car of the lot, the Alpine. Um, manages to get ahead of Ocon there. In the Williams, Alonso goes quickest. Alonso versus Verstappen. What a battle that is going to be. 
Obviously Hamilton in the uh, in the Ferrari as well. Be interesting to see if he can get his form back this season. Schumacher on the cusp now. Ricardo currently P10. We are going to go out for a second run pretty shortly. And let uh, Hulkenberg get past. Send out Ricardo first and then Mick Schumacher. Yeah, I don't think anybody behind us is. Uh, going for it just yet so here we go then Mick Schumacher can he get himself through into Q2 Fernando Alonso currently the quickest man out there Bottas is uh, following Daniel Ricciardo around Ricciardo needs this lap a little less than his teammate but it is a green first sector nonetheless a 26-9 plays a 27-1 for Mick Schumacher but good to see uh, both drivers improved. Oh, that Red Bull is very much in the way. Mick Schumacher might struggle now. Here comes Ricardo through the middle sector to 40.4, 40.7. So it is an improvement for Mick Schumacher. Both of them are improving. Daniel Ricardo is going to be over the line first, though. Can he get himself into the top 10? Ricardo over the line with a 30.3 matches Hulkenberg here comes Schumacher and he only goes up to 16th so he is on the cusp here Mick Schumacher is under pressure who is out there that can challenge us Porsche signs and uh, Sergeant are the only ones we can see signs is right behind um, the, the Haas of Lawson, but he doesn't quite make it. Signs is out in Q1. It's a good lap from him in that Alpine, but uh, not enough in the end. So it's uh, Lando Norris who is quickest. Daniel Ricciardo in P11 within a second of the fastest car. And I think that that's the, the main thing we've got to take from that. Mick Schumacher just squeaks through. Okay, into Q2 then. Brand new, fresh set of boots. And we're going to go for Mick Schumacher out there straight away. Going to get Ricardo out there as well. Hopefully avoid some of the traffic. Mick Schumacher is going to get no traffic. And that is beautiful for Mick Schumacher. 27-2 first sector. Not ideal from him. What about uh, Ricardo? He's coming through now to 27-0. It's not his best time. 40.6 middle sector. That's uh, Mick Schumacher's best middle sector so far. Here he comes then. Mick Schumacher is going to head over the line. It's a 131.0. That's uh, about 7 tenths slower than what Daniel Ricardo managed with his last lap, he's yeah, he's just so much quicker, isn't he? Danny Rick and uh, big upgrade. It is seeming Danny Rick coming up to the line. It's in the 30s. It's a 30.2. And that puts him up into second position for now. Quicker than Nico Hulkenberg in the Mercedes. Now it's a question of do we send them out? Hamilton locking up in that Ferrari. We are going to send them out again on the scrub tyres and see what we can do here. Mm, it's not any improvement at all. It's a little bit slower, if anything. We'll have a look through the middle sector. Any improvement to be found? None for Schumacher. Any for Ricardo? No. So we're just going to bring them straight back into the pits. We'll put them on a brand new bit of rubber. Yeah. But at the moment, Ricardo is through. Um, Leclerc is 
the one to keep an eye on in that bottom five. Hulkenberg can probably go quicker as well. Send them out now. It seems like there's not a lot of uh, traffic out there on the track. So I should be able to put in our best possible time here with these boys. Daniel Ricciardo is going to get us off and running. Can Daniel Ricciardo get himself into the top 10 shootout here? It'll be a fantastic start for us. And it is a quicker first sector, 26.9 for both drivers. And actually, Schumacher shared in that first sector. Good to see. Bottas goes into the top 10. But he's not above Hulken, uh, above Ricardo. Ricardo coming through the middle sector now. What can he manage? He goes with a 40.3. It's an improvement. And it's a 40.3 middle sector for Schumacher as well. Schumacher's pulling it out of the bag here. Sonoda is out of qualifying. Here comes Daniel Ricciardo then. Can he secure his position in the top 10 shootout? It's a 130.1. He does go above Albon. Here comes Mick Schumacher. Can he join his teammate? It's a 30.0. Yes, he does. And he goes above Daniel Ricciardo. And, uh, well, unless Albon can improve, he might improve here. He's not improving. Albon over the line. He improves his final sector, but it's not enough. He is out. What about Hulkenberg? Hulkenberg is improving. Hulkenberg over the line, and he goes ninth. Wow. Daniel Ricciardo knocked out in Q2 by his teammate, Mick Schumacher. Um, tenth and a half behind. Where did Mick Schumacher find that pace? Schumacher's through the top 10 shootout. Daniel Ricciardo is out in Q2. <laughs> he will be feeling so hard done by there. But, it, well, it's a good position to be in P11. But that's exciting that we are able to compete. Uh, we seem to be comfortably ahead of RB. And, uh, well, we've got one car through to the top 10 shootout. Let's see what we can do with him. So, here we go. Mick Schumacher is going to head out there on the scrub tyres straight away. Can he put in good time here? Let's see. Oh, it's a very poor first sector. Oh dear. Oh dear. Understood. Yeah. There's no point finishing this lap, is there? Can, can he come in, please? What's he doing? <laughs> He's decided to continue on anyway. Right, never mind. Um, so Schumacher, just a 17 seconds off the pace. It's uh, not not a big deal. I think now's uh, the time. Lewis Hamilton is out there. He's uh, going to be putting in his final lap. Can he out-qualify his teammate? Let's have a look at Hamilton's times. They're not any better, I'm afraid. But not a lot between Hamilton and Leclerc, which is what we were expecting to see. So here comes Mick Schumacher then, his old teammate Nico Hulkenberg has just gone through. And he uh, has put it P8 for now. Now then, here comes Mick Schumacher. 26.9 would be ideal through this first sector. It's a 27 flat, that's not bad. That is not bad. It was a 30.0 that he managed. If he can get anywhere near that, that would be P8 on the grid right now. Zhou Guan Yu has uh, out-qualified his teammate George Russell by quite a significant margin. Coming through the middle sector to 40.7, so it's not quite as good for Mick Schumacher this time. But can he get above his former teammate 
Nico Hulkenberg, he heads up to the line. It's a 30.8. It's not quite enough. He couldn't find uh, that ultimate pace in Q3. And that is P10 for Mick Schumacher. But it's P10 and P11 on the grid for Lotus F1. Can we get some points in the season opener? Here in Sakir, the floodlights are on and it's nearly time for 57 laps around the Bahrain International Circuit. Bahrain has seen some of the most dramatic races in F1, like Sergio Perez's incredible 2020 victory, surging ahead from being last on the opening lap. Bahrain International Circuit was Formula One's first venue in the Middle East and is still a calendar favorite. Dusty and challenging, this desert track is a real test of endurance for teams and for drivers. Tension continues to build here as race day begins. Okay, perfect. Right, clear skies here for race day. I'm excited to find out where our true pace lies. Um, what do we want to do then? So they're suggesting an aggressive start with Daniel. Uh, which I quite like. I quite like that. The look of that strategy. Mick Schumacher, on the other hand. looks good and uh, he's going to be able to push a little bit in that middle stint now we're gonna um gonna take a lap of fuel out of both of them they should be able to make that fuel up that the, there is less fuel efficiency in these mercedes engines we do know that and um, that could be an issue but uh yeah we're gonna start mick on the soft tires danny rick on the um medium tires and well it does seem that danny rick is gonna be a lot quicker i'm not entirely sure why maybe they just think he's a quicker driver <laughs> who knows right let's get ourselves into it then this is the Bahrain grand prix well it's great to have you with us folks as we settle in for the weekend's grand prix action and for that man, Mick Schumacher, this could be an interesting race. Starting P10 puts them in the right place to get some points. But there's still a lot to do. Okay, it took right. uh, 21 races it, for Mick Schumacher to get points last season. He starts in P10 today. Here we go, the Here we go then. Conference. Ready for the lights. It's Max Verstappen versus Fernando Alonso and into turn lights one. Out. Lights and out. And away we go here for the season opener. What do we have to do? We're going to tell okay. them to be aggressive. Alonso has had the better start into turn go. one. They go side by side. And it is Max Verstappen that leads out of turn one. But Fernando Alonso getting his elbows out through turn two. Can he battle with Verstappen up the hill towards turn four? They're still side by side and it is Fernando Alonso that asserts his dominance over young Max Verstappen or young compared to Fernando Alonso even though uh, he's got more world titles Leclerc is third followed by Piastri in fourth then Norris then Joe Guan Yu is in sixth Hamilton's had a poor start he's start down in 2p7 at the moment and you can see him flying along there Russell is p8 followed by Hulkenberg and then we have got uh, Daniel Ricciardo in P10 he has made the better start of our two boys Lawson is 11th then we've got uh, Mick Schumacher in 12th Albon is 13th Sonoda Bottas Stroll then Sainz then Magnussen Gasly Porsche Ocon and uh, Sargent Okay, so can Daniel Ricciardo make a move on Nico Hulkenberg early on here? Obviously, he is on the uh, medium tyres. So important to not use too much of them at the start here. 
but ideally wants to stay close to these guys. Make sure you meanwhile already. I'm going to look at uh, Liam Lawson. Trying to get himself uh, back into it here. And that is Lawson into the top 10 then. Haas didn't score a single point last season. Lawson has already got in a 10th place. And there goes Mick Schumacher past his teammate. He is through. I need to get him back down to standard now. Let's have a little look at tyres. So, yeah, people have really gone for it on tyres early on here. We need to try and just look after them a little bit, I think. Goes uh, Daniel Ricardo. He is through now. Yeah, race pace at the minute not looking fantastic for our boys. Ricardo lost th two positions there, down to fourteenth now. He also lost. Uh, well, he lost three because he lost to his teammate as well and. Yeah, maybe we're doing the wrong thing here, looking after our tyres. Because look how far Albon's got already. Look at this. This is crazy. 13th and 14th right now. But yeah, you look at those tyres and you think, wow, they're, they're, they've got to drop off soon. Schumacher currently following Yuki Tsunoda. I think should be able to make that move stick, although Daniel Ricciardo has thrown it around the outside. What a move from him. He's now the one in pole position to take Yuki Tsunoda, his old teammate, of course. Maybe looking to prove a point against him. So, DRS enabled but not able to get close enough just yet yeah, looking at tyres surely people are going to start struggling here down the inside goes Daniel Ricciardo he is through the DRS gets him further away Use a little bit of ERS to try and defend from Yuki Sonoda, and he is through. Schumacher threw on uh, Yuki Sonoda as well. Let's have a little look at this so you can see. The opportunity's there. Lovely move there from Mick Schumacher. He's going to have DRS as well to pull away. And now, chance for us to try and catch up to Albon and Lawson. They very much seem to have dropped off from Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg himself, eight seconds behind Lewis Hamilton, who is uh, bringing up the rear of that next group. But Alonso and Verstappen, they are battling it out at the front. And seem to be in a great position here. Right. Daniel Ricciardo should be able to get past Lawson quite easily. And he goes straight down the inside. Beautiful move there from Daniel Ricciardo. And he is through up into 11th now so this phase of the race we are quicker and the 
the guys who have uh, been a little bit ambitious with their aggression on tyres. Lawson now drops below 50%. That's uh, going to be crucial. Right, Schumacher, a little bit more aggression then. Why not? My time to try and top up his ERS as well. But yeah, it doesn't quite have a go just yet. So we'll move him up to high. Aggression overtakes. Defence from Lawson. There we go. He is through. Big move. And now hopefully they can both push on away from Liam Lawson. Try and slingshot our way towards... Albon and Hulkenberg. Here comes Ricardo around the outside. DRS open and he is through. Okay, right. Desperately trying to catch up to those two Mercedes cars. Got about eight seconds behind here. But surely we must be on one less stop. That's just. I mean, Stroll now up in 10th. Lawson's uh, a long way down. He's come into the pits, I think. Right, let's get Schumacher in. Hopefully get him a bit of an undercut here. Okay, box now, make box now. Copy for box. Where we go next lap. We can't, yeah. That's fine. Box now, Mick. Understood, box now. Daniel Ricciardo's got another lap or so. Yep. Just see if he can close up to Joe a bit. That's not what I wanted to do. It was uh, Ricciardo that I, I'm going to yep. tell. Don't fret okay. your team, mate. Annoyingly, what that did do was allow Lance Stroll through. That's uh, That wasn't part of the plan. But Mick Schumacher is in. Let's see how our pit times look this year. Decent, 2.4. That'll do nicely. They'll be very close to us at the pit exit, so we'll be racing at the pit exit. Yeah, we're behind a, a load of guys there, but we're on very different tyre strategies. We're currently P17. Bottas ahead. One laps to go. Right, Ricardo's in this lap then. How's his uh, pit time going to be? 
Lovely 2.3, our fastest ever pit stop, I believe that. And he's going to come out now. He's going to be ahead of Mick Schumacher, just I think. And on those soft tyres, hopefully a chance for Daniel Ricciardo to make up for lost time here. Now that the, the field is spread out a bit, just give some opportunity to uh, to drive your own race out there. And I think that, that is so important in this year's game is running your own race and not, not being too rigid. And well, look at, look at that though. Make sure my cap was Overtaken by Carlos Sainz in the Alpine. Well, that's not something that happened too often last year, so we certainly don't want that to happen this year. And there goes Mick Schumacher down the inside of Carlos Sainz. And he gets himself through. Nicely done. Okay, right. So Ricardo starting to catch up to Valtteri Bottas. Thinking let's uh, push Schumacher away from Carlos Sainz. Really important that we did that so that he can focus on his own race again. And Ricardo right behind Bottas now in his old car. And he heads down the inside, beautifully done. That's a push hard on the tyres as well. And desperate to keep Bottas a second behind here cannot have Bottas within a, a second but here he comes once again and Betty Bottas is he, is he going to come back through here no not quite ok Stroll is overtaking Schumacher Ricardo about to catch it Liam Lawson. He should just just about be in DRS range. Yep, here he goes. Pulls to the inside. Oh, doesn't quite manage it there. That was uh, very unlike Daniel Ricciardo. So 13th place right now. Just about halfway into this Grand Prix. And yeah, now starting to zone in on Yuki Tsunoda. Schumacher, meanwhile, just not quite um, at the races here. 16th place, obviously started P10, one lap pace looking good, but long run pace again, looking like a bit of an issue here. been into the pits twice but most people have been in only once Hulkenberg into the pits Sonora into the pits as well so that's a surefire sign that Ricardo needs to try and pick up the pace a little bit here give 
Give it a couple of laps and then he needs to really hammer it. Alex 2.0 so here comes uh, Daniel Ricardo into the pit lane for his second pit stop his final pit stop as well so when he comes nicely done another 2.4 second pit stop comes back out in 12th place and is a pit stop officially ahead of his teammate Mick Schumacher that's not ideal for Mick. That is for sure. Not a great um, debut against his teammate, is it? Ricardo seemingly continuing off where Nico Hulkenberg left. Exactly what we wanted. Right, I think Mick Schumacher let's get him into the pits. Schumacher in. It's a slow stop. It's a very slow stop. Sorry, man. 8.4 seconds. And racing at the exit. And that now puts him in a race with Pierre Gasly. He uh, very much wasn't in. Here, P17. Let's have a look at uh, yeah, Ricardo still on the lead lap here. So he's about 20 seconds behind Nico Hulkenberg. So Hulkenberg, I think, will have to come in again. Don't know about the other guys. I think they're possibly just going to eke it out until the end now. So really, it's uh, Yuki Sonoda that we're fighting for last play or the last points place with um, Hulkenberg in there as well. Sonoda's had a great race on the uh, in the RB. Coast, please. Probably manage a little bit more push on the engine. But then, you know, we're so low down anyway. It's probably not worth it with uh, Mick Schumacher today. It's not been good for Mick. I have to say, quite surprised. Thought he, he would be uh, a bit better today. Hasn't quite happened. Right, Hulkenberg's in. Now Hulkenberg is going to be on brand new soft tyres until the end of this race. He's going to be attacking. And he's going to be enjoying himself out there. Ricardo, he's still on the. Uh, yeah, Schumacher just, just ran wide as well. Yeah, so right, so Verstappen has okay. just lapped Daniel Ricardo. 
But that is a possible opportunity for us to stay with Max and just increase our lap times a little bit. No, I think Hulkenberg's going to get him here. That's going to be the end of that one. So I think Nico's going to have the last laugh here for Mercedes. And there you go, he is comfortably through. Not a lot we could have done there. And it's looking like a 12th placed finish right now. Schumacher's just overtaken Stroll. But they are battling. We probably do need 14th and 15th here for the uh, the performance targets, so... We do need uh, Schumacher to... do his best to stay in front of... Uh, Stroll. Got three laps to go. Max Verstappen leading the way. Alonso is second. Norris third. Try to save you where you can. Okay. Need to save some fuel because we're not going to finish. Well, Sonoda somehow still on those tyres, still doing a a good job out there. Ocon's overtaking Schumacher. Where's Ocon come from in all of this? Final lap of the race. Tires of Zocon on, yeah, nothing special, but I think he's uh, Max Verstappen over the finish line. He's gonna manage Max it. Verstappen finishes the race. He wins ahead of Alonso. It's a Red Bull 1 2. They are back, all right. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo finishes P12 in his debut for Lotus. Work to do, I think. But, uh, yeah, well done. With our Race pace in particular. It's a part time official will guide you. Uh, Mick Schumacher, I don't think he's going to get anywhere here. Mode push. Uh, he's trying to catch up to Ocon, but isn't going to manage it. It's going to be a disappointing 16th place for Mick Schumacher. Started P10 after a fabulous Q2 got him there. But in the end, he comes across the line in 16th place and worryingly a long long way behind his teammate Daniel Ricciardo but it's a pointless outing for us here over and out Yuki Tsunoda in the top 10 for RB that's a big result for them Mercedes starting out with two points there Aston Martin looking good and yeah, it's looking ominous at the top with Red Bull. They were a long way ahead of McLaren. The drivers make their way back to the pit lane, and there we've got Daniel Ricciardo. Just out of the points today with a P12 finish in the end. Well, Max Verstappen can add yet another podium to his already impressive record. Their first win of the season, and the team looking on will be very proud, I'm sure. And we've certainly kicked things off in style here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Well, Karun, how do you think they'll be feeling in the team garage at the end of that? Well, it was a bit of a mixed bag here. Some things went their way, but others didn't. I think their main target now will be finding some consistency for sure. And that is about that for this weekend's action here in Bahrain. Trying to skip this, but it's uh, not letting me. 
But there you go. There is the first result of the season. George Russell in the top six, managing to get past his teammate Joe Guan Yu in the process. Uh, Max Verstappen obviously leading the way. We remain in seventh place in the constructors. We were the best of the non-scorers. But, uh, yeah, quite worrying, really. Lotus uh, in second there for fastest pit stop, 2.3. Um, and Mick Schumacher there in P10. Wow. Well, we start off in third place. <laughs> if we keep that up, that'd be amazing. But we did have a, a, a difficult um, pit stop there, didn't we? And that's unfortunately cost us, didn't it? But um, Daniel Ricciardo passed his performance target. Not make Schumacher though. And there we go then. That is that. It is the start of the season. Um, oh dear, they're not good. Um, no, that's a shame. Um, were they okay with that? I've no idea. Does it? Are we better, or are we worse? Are they happy with that last Grand Prix? Let's have a look. They're disappointed with the finances. There's not really a lot I can do about that. Um. Yeah, Bahrain's not on there. Oh no, it is. Uh, Sakia, happy. They're happy with that. Okay, fair enough. Right, uh, that is where we're going to leave it for part one of season two. If you have enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more F1 Manager videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.